Mr. Peter Fleming! Woo! It's me, Peter Fleming. I'm back. Hooray! Yes, yes, everybody's on board straight away. <laughs> he already doesn't like it. That's good. It's wonderful to be here. I'm with you here tonight. Uh, you, you all remember me. I'm sure you remember me, don't you, sir? Yeah, well, yes, okay. yes, you remember me, don't you, Matt? Yes, yes, unanimous nodding up here. Everyone can't see the back. And if anyone's not familiar with my face, no more, I'm sure you'll be more than familiar with the classic children's television programs that I made for the BBC all through the 1960s and 70s. Mrs. Bob Joy's Magic Attic. Nicholas, <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas the Mischievous Cupboard. <laughs> Release my crockery, you monster! <laughs> Perspective national tour of my work. I've been on it for the best part of 20 years. And lately I've been going all over the place talking to audiences about, uh, like yourselves, about my progress. I've been going up and down the, uh, the, 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 the Rochdale Canal. <laughs> uh, ever since I was evicted from my home uh, two months ago. I've been drifting aimlessly since then on, on a small raft. Now, uh, now to, tonight I've got something very special to talk to you about. See, normally I, I go around the place talking about my BBC programs that I made. You all remember the story of Millie, the steam-powered elephant, <laughs> Freddy, the 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 door. <laughs> Something very special, Anna. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about my first ever foray into the world of commercial television. <laughs> yes, I can see some of you know what's coming up, I'm sure, as we all remember, in the mid 1960s. I, uh, I produced, uh, yeah, that's broken. <laughs> I produced a series of highly successful advertisements in the mid 60s for none other than Matey Bubble Bar. <laughs> now, we all remember this stuff, don't we? Now, I was absolutely wild about this stuff when I was a child. I can hear what you're all, what you're all saying. Peter, how did you, the, the master? Mind behind programs like David, the Helpful Clock. What was going through my head? But if you allow me to get a word, you can stop bantering with all the stuff. <laughs> I was wild about the stuff as a child, and I was absolutely delighted when the opportunity came uh, to, to help me to get their message out to the, the children of Great Britain so they'd start using it every single bath time. And I thought to, to capture the public's imagination, what we could do is do something really innovative and uh, turn all of these adverts that we made into one ongoing story. And so you see, every week the children would tune in uh, in the little breaks of their favourite programme and see a new chapter in the lives of two lovable little characters, Captain Bernard and his best friend and captain cabin boy, Little Julian. <laughs> they were very, yes, they were a very sweet pair, weren't they? <laughs> It gave me a chance to explore my own boyhood fascination with, with life at sea. And so what I'm going to show you is uh, just a few choice extracts from the, the adverts that we made back in the day. And we're going to start with the, the very first. Uh, before we begin uh, with this uh, little clip, I should just say I can't uh, screen any of the original footage many of my programs on this tour because uh, they've all been wiped from the archives. Presumably <laughs> uh, by mistake. Uh, so I shall be recreating them all live on the stage for you. And uh, in this case, playing every single character myself. Self, uh, since everybody else involved is either now dead, in prison, or both. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard shipmates as we set sail to October 1965 with Bernard and Julian, the salty the sailors. Uh, could we have the, uh, the, the second uh, piece of music down? Oh, two, thank you. Matey Bubble Bath presents the Salty Sailors in Shore Leave. Well, Julian, my boy, another spell on the high seas has come to an end. Yes, now we dedicated Navy Boys to enjoy a well earned spot ashore. I only wish I weren't forbidden from going to visit my mummy by the regulations you told me about. <laughs> I've told you before, we can't have mothers in the Navy, Julian. They're too big and spoil the rigging. <laughs> Boy, we'll have two pints of your phoniest brine, please. My <laughs> Bernard, don't you know brine's not the way to have a good time? Nonsense, boy. <laughs> now let's kick back with a tangle of this pungent Cornish broth and read a map. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, for a Navy boy to stay on board, he should have a hot bath every night in fun and bubbly matey! <laughs> matey? <laughs> the of sailors loves a tub, Captain. It's soft on the skin, it gets you clean, and it tastes... <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Wowee, I'm hooked. Back to my quarters, Julian. I'll give you a steamy soak and a foamy mouthful. <laughs> This is a navy pub. They've all got the stuff on tap. Capital! Spray me, landlord! I'm in the navy! Ahoy! Ahoy! Salty sailors, the fairest of friends, and nothing more. Brought to you by Katie Bubble Bar. Bay the way, boys! <laughs> Navy boys and their delicious froth captured the public imagination and soon they were every bit as popular as the television programs they were sandwiched between. They were absolutely, uh, we were absolutely delighted with it. So over the course of that year we must have made close to 300 individual films of Captain and Cabin Boy frolicking about, uh, sometimes at sea, often in the bath. So it was a very satisfying time for us creatively. We were absolutely delighted with the results, but all good things must come to an end, of course. In the salty sailor's case, a very sad sudden end when Matey, of all people, took the whole thing, the whole thing crashing down uh, when they decided to take legal action against me, citing the fact they'd never asked me to make any adverts for them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we were I was misrepresenting the product with one or two of the, the choices we were making, so that was that. The, the Salty Sailor came in, and the last ever commercial was broadcast in uh, April 1966 during a particularly gripping episode of the game show, Which Container Have We Sealed Your Family With? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is a very, I'd like to see that one come back. Uh, Chris Tarrant could do a. <laughs> It was a great shame. Yeah, we would have uh, ploughed on through. They only had two complaints in the in the first place, and we would have been able to work through them. If they told us, you see, the first uh, problem, uh, you're going to think this is ridiculous, but they said that the number of times we were showing Bernard and Julian drinking the Macy was encouraging children at home to drink the Macy. <laughs> <laughs> this is preposterous. And they were getting a rise in sales anyway, because uh, the parents were absolutely hooked on the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they, they would have. Uh, let us get away with that, but they finally put their foot down and got in touch with us for the first time to put an end to it when we started pursuing a new artistic style with the advertisements. We were very keen to experiment, but they felt that our new creative direction was causing upset at home, which I think is ludicrous. But I've prepared you a typical extract from that period. You can decide for yourselves whether we uh, went too far. Can we have the, uh, the music from that one, please? <laughs> Come to the answer to the burning question on the lips of everyone who's got a good view of the stage. Why is there a mop on it? Well, uh, well now you uh, have your answer, don't you? Uh, here's any, uh, any, uh, any hazards to else on tonight. Well, uh, if anything, I seem to be making it worse. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a, a, a pity to have to finish it uh, like that so, so suddenly, but I went back to the, the BBC, it was uh, you know, no skin off my uh, my back, but it was a shame to, to end it so soon, because we would have been able to, to work with it, and there were such silly, uh, silly complaints, weren't they, because there's, there's no link, is there, between what people see on television and how they, how they behave in real life, is it? Like Popeye was a very, uh, <laughs> Popeye was a very, uh, very popular programme in its day, but is spinach eaten any more widely now? No, no, it's <laughs> not. I can tell you for a fact, if you charge around a park in Britain today, violently throwing raw spinach at children, <laughs> screaming at them at the top of your voice, you, 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 you lose custody of them. <laughs> I went back to the, uh, to, the, to the BBC in any case, and uh, I, I was able to carry on making programmes that were similarly imaginative and spirited. It was a real golden age of uh, children's television. Uh, we always remember the, the, the classics, don't we? Things like, uh, things like Look After Your Spoons from 1968, that was a good one. Or, or Simon's Porcelain Matron. <laughs> one of my favorite, you'll remember that. To bed, vile boy, or I'll shatter my palm on you! <laughs> I made all sorts of programs like this, and then, and then, of, uh, and then of course, lastly, my, my personal favourite, really, the, the little boy who went to hell. <laughs> She definitely brought my career to a very decisive end. Uh, it was too much for some people, and, uh, and so and so that was that. My my career finished uh, that uh, that year, 19, uh, 1974 it was, and, and uh, that was that. My uh, my programmes were gradual 
thrown out of uh, of the archives. No, uh, uh, no legacy was left over there, and here I am now, decades on, with uh, no uh, no home, no uh, no good family to, uh, to to speak of. And uh, all my programs have been thrown out over the years. Uh, no real record of the uh, happiest uh, time I've done in my uh, life. Uh, uh, Twenty-two years work. I'm not bitter, <laughs> and, and, and the reason I'm not, is, I'll tell you the reason that I'm not, is that, is that, is that I still bump into the people who, who remember my programs from, from back in the day, and, and they still, they took them into their hearts, and they still remember, you know, only, only other two years ago, <laughs> came up to me, and, and although he was a, 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 little, uh, a little the worse way, he'd fallen on hard times, I think he's, he, he managed to recognise me, and he came up to me, and he, he just thought to himself, what a well, lovely thing to do to brighten his own day, would be to come up to me and say, his favourite catchphrase, the very, uh, very famous catchphrase from Simon and Mr. Henderson, you probably remember, don't you? He came up to me, held me out his hand and said, Excuse me, sir, do you have any spare change? <laughs> it's remarkable! <laughs> and naturally, I came quick as a flash with Mr. Henderson's stock reply to Simon, Yes, and you're not getting a penny! And <laughs> of course, he, he responded with Simon's trademark violent anger. <laughs> you know, I haven't run like that since, uh, well, since. <laughs> There are other people who, they're far too young to have seen these programs and they went out first hand. And I tell them that, uh, that these things uh, existed and that, that I helped to create them and that perhaps my life hasn't been a, an utter waste. Yeah, they, they, they really do look as though they're trying to believe me. <laughs> yeah, I can see a lot of all those friendly faces uh, here tonight, but uh, I, I come to the end of my time. I, uh, I can feel it. <laughs> so, before I go, you seem such a nice, uh, sympathetic bunch of people. I think there's one more small favour I can ask for you. You see, uh, uh, the peak of uh, the Salty Sailors' uh, success around about uh, February, actually, in uh, 1966, we released a, a hit single. It made the top 41 chart. It was uh, <laughs> the song made to time with the adverts. It was uh, the song of the seven mechanical penguins. And it uh, just so happens that only the other day I found uh, an old record of the instrumental version of the song whilst I was foraging for food in a skip. So, uh, so what we're going to do now is play the music over the uh, over the speakers and if there's anybody in this room who ever wants to one of my programs into their, into their hearts and their imaginations and their lives and would like to sing the words out bright and clear for you and <laughs> warm the heart of a, an old man before I step back out into the night and uh, set sail once more. So, uh, so, so we'll end on this. Uh, my name's Peter Fleming. You've been absolutely delightful. And one last time, nice and loud, could we have the music please? So far. <laughs> 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 <laughs>